Well, happy Friday, everybody. Pastor Steve here. Thank you for joining me for today's uh, devotion. I hope you've had a great week, whether you've been at work, on vacation, but especially I hope you've had a great week with the Lord in His Word and looking forward to worshiping Him uh, Sunday morning. Uh, we have our services this Sunday. Remember, we are now doing three worship services on Sunday, a contemporary service at 8.30, traditional service at 9.45, and a second contemporary service at uh, at uh, 11 o'clock. So we invite you to worship with us here uh, this Sunday as well. Uh, today we are in Exodus chapter 4. And there's an interesting event that takes place in this chapter that you seldom hear anybody talk about. It's when God tried to kill Moses. That's right. That's what I said. God tried to kill Moses. So let's read it and talk about it. Exodus chapter 4, beginning at verse 24. Now, uh, Moses, his wife, and sons are on their way to Egypt after the burning bush experience. And in verse 24, the Bible says, Now it came about at the lodging place, so they had stopped someplace to spend the night, on the way that the Lord, now listen to this, that the Lord met him, met Moses, and sought to put him to death. Now read that again. It came about at the lodging place on the way, on the way to Egypt, that the Lord, that God, met him, met Moses, and sought to put him to death. Verse 25, then Zipporah, his wife, uh, took a flint, a knife, and she cut off her son's foreskin. She circumcised her, her son and threw it at Moses' feet. And she said, you are indeed a bridegroom of blood to me. And, uh, and so he let him alone. God let Moses alone. He didn't kill him. Um, and at that, at, at that time, she said to Moses again, you are a bridegroom of blood because of the circumcision. Interesting, interesting story. Um, why, why does it say God uh, met Moses and sought to put him to death? Well, it's interesting. Moses was on his way to Egypt to be God's instrument to lead the Hebrew children to freedom from slavery toward the promised land, and he was, as part of that mission, to teach them to, to obey the commandments of God. Well, you remember all the way back in Genesis 17, God met Abraham and established his covenant with Abraham and all of his descendants, the Jewish people, the Hebrew, the Hebrew people, and said that I will be your God and you and your descendants will be my people. And the sign of the covenant, the sign of this relationship between me and your descendants, the Hebrew people, is circumcision. And every male child is to be circumcised as a sign of the covenant, as a, as a, as a sign of them being Jewish, being part of the Hebrew family, the Hebrew people. Well, apparently, Moses had not obeyed that commandment. And uh, that made him unfit to lead the people of Israel to freedom and unworthy of teaching them to obey the commandments of God because he had not obeyed the commandment of God on his own. And so God is confronting him about that. And Zipporah, his wife, circumcises the kid. Now, she's angry about this. She confronts Moses, throws the foreskin at his feet, says, you are the bridegroom of blood. Um, remember, she was not of Hebrew lineage. She was a Midianite. And so apparently her family, her tribe, uh, the people of her area did not practice circumcision. This was something that the Jewish people did. And so she looked at it with disdain. She did it to save Moses' life. Um, interesting, interesting story. But the takeaway for me is if you're going to be a leader, you need to also be obedient. And you can't ask people to do what you haven't done or are unwilling to do. Uh, obedience to the Word of God, to the will of God, is essential to being long-term, effectual leaders of God and being honored by God. And if you don't obey God, sooner or later it's going to catch up with you. In recent uh, months, there's been a lot in the news about uh, uh, Ravi Zacharias, who was a very prominent Christian leader and an apologist and 
teacher, but yet there was there was this uh, very significant hypocrisy in his life in terms of sexual ethics and harassment of women, sexual harassment, and his reputation has been destroyed, his ministry left in ruins after he's now deceased, and, um, and has hurt the cause of Christ. This story of God confronting Moses on his way to Egypt uh, for me, is a reminder that it's important for all of us in leadership at any level, whatever level, if we're in leadership in the kingdom of God, we're not going to be perfect, but we do need to be obedient. And uh, we shouldn't be asking people to do what we haven't been willing to do ourselves. Moses learned that lesson here. And it was also God preparing him so that he could do what God had called him to do. So look at our own lives, look at your own life, and are there areas where you're disobedient that maybe you need to clean up, correct, and get right with God so you can be more effective, more equipped, more ready to lead in the kingdom of God. Well, I hope God's word said something to you today and that you're responsive to it. Look forward to seeing you in church Sunday morning. We'll also have our services online. Uh, welcome to worship with us that way as well. And I'll see you Monday with another devotion as we move to Exodus chapter 5.